Every action that affects inventory valuation or count is recorded as a distinct transaction. Two very important transactions are the pick and the return. A pick captures the event of taking material out of inventory and using it on a job. A return captures the event of returning unused material back to inventory. If you use the shop floor data collection system, ShopPack automatically populates the material card form with material transactions. If you don't use shop floor data collection, then shop employees will need to fill out material usage cards and someone will need to enter these transactions into ShopPack via this tab. Use the material card form to add, edit, and approve inventory picks and returns. When you approve a pick or return transaction, ShopPack updates job costs as well as adjusts inventory item counts. Since direct material purchases do not reference inventory items, employees don't have to record their usage. The Material Card tab is only used when picking stock material from inventory or returning unused stock items back into inventory. The Shop Pack Material Card lists transactions that were posted for a particular employee on a particular day. For an employee to be listed, make sure their Show on Time Card Material Card list is checked on their employee form. In the upper left corner of the form, you'll see Card Date. Use Card Date to display the transactions that were posted for a particular day. Use the drop down calendar to pick the date you wish to see. Next to card date is the department filter. If you select all, then all employees are listed. If you select a particular department, then only employees from that department are shown. Place employees in a primary department via the Define Employee menu item. To see a particular employee's transactions or add new transactions to an employee, select the employee with your mouse. You'll notice that the name of the currently selected employee appears in the upper right hand area of the form. If material card is checked, it means the employee has at least one inventory pick or return transaction for the selected date. If approved is checked, it means that the employee's material card has been reviewed and approved for that date. To create a new material card transaction, Make sure you have the correct employee highlighted and then right click the material grid. Select New from the pop up menu. This brings up the Material Card Entry dialog box. Identify the work order the material is used for. Either key the work order in or click the Jobs button to select the work order from a list. If the inventory item is not managed by the piece, Type the inventory item code, or click the Materials button to select the inventory code from a list. If the inventory item is managed by the piece, enter the piece number that was picked or returned. The material description is automatically filled in by ShopPack when you provide an inventory item code or a piece identifier. ShopPack automatically fills in inventory location if you type the piece number or you type the inventory code, provided the inventory item is stored at only one location. However, if the inventory item is stored in multiple locations, you need to select the correct location from the drop down list. Enter the quantity and select the transaction type, pick or return. Optionally, provide the time of the pick or return and click OK. Or, if you have several transactions for the current employee, press Save Start New Entry. To change an existing material card, select the Inventory Material Transaction. Right click the Material Card Grid and select Modify. Make your changes accordingly and click OK. ShopPack separates the function of adding material transactions from the function of approving them. Two tabs run along the bottom of the material card grid, and each tab has its own security settings. You can assign responsibility for entering material transactions to one person, 
while assigning responsibility for approving transactions to someone else. Before approving a material card, make sure the correct card date is picked and the correct employee is selected. Click the Approve Card tab to see the material transactions for that employee for that day. The Approve Card tab contains additional job information to help you ensure that the material transactions are posted to the correct job and work order. If you need to change something, select the transaction and right mouse click the Approve Card grid. Choose Modify or Delete. These operations work the same way as they do on the Manual Entry tab. When you're satisfied with the material card entries, click the Approve Current Employee Card or the Approve All Cards button. ShopPack updates the database and places a check in the Employee's Approved checkbox. It also updates the aggregate approved cards totals at the top of the form and places a check in all of the individual job cost entries that make up the material card. At this point, the new material card transactions will have been added into the overall job cost material accumulators and can be reviewed on any job cost report or form. ShopPack also updates associated inventory item counts. If an inventory item was picked from inventory, ShopPack subtracts the quantity used from on-hand counts. If the inventory item has a reservation for the job identified by the material usage transaction, ShopPack also subtracts the quantity used from the reserved counts as well. It recalculates the inventory item's available count. We recommend that when a job is finished, bring up the job details form and not only change the job status to complete, also click the Unreserve All Unused Job Inventory Reservations button. This tells ShopPack to remove any reservations that still exist for the job. This ensures that inventory reservation counts are accurate.